What is up, Adalo makers? Today, let's look at how to use OpenAI uh, Chat GPT to generate some summaries for books that someone might add uh, to to an app. Um, you know, if you use the Goodreads app or maybe uh, the Amazon Kindle app, um, there's summaries that are provided for books, but maybe you don't want to use an, an API. Maybe you want to summarize some other piece of pop culture, uh, movies or, or whatever, video games, whatever it is. Uh, Chat GPT, OpenAI does this quite well. So let's look at how to do this. Uh, in my database here, I've just got a, a collection called Books with a title. And I'm actually going to add another text field here called Summary. And this is where, this is the property that we're going to uh, use to save whatever chat GPT returns to us. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, build out this form a little bit. I'm going to add in a form and field here. And then let's add a button to actually submit. And we'll remove this icon here. We're going to add a custom action to this in just a minute. Let's go ahead and add in a simple list here. And I'll go ahead and turn off this left section. We could add in and uh, have the user submit an image of the book as well if we wanted to. But I'm going to turn that off just for now. The title, we'll just make this, uh, well, let's go ahead and set the list, what this is a list of. It's a list of books. And the title is the book title. There we go. And the subtitle, we'll make this be the, uh, the summary of it, all right? And let's make this no max. So we want to be able to see the entire summary of the book here, all right? Uh, cool. So let's get into this. Um, let's add a custom action to this button so that, you know, whenever a user types in what they want to summarize, um, and then maybe maybe we've actually got a, let's, uh, let's, uh, what is the title of the book? Cool. So uh, let's let's uh, let's add a custom action here to this submit button. Go here, custom action, new custom action, and let's call this Open AI uh, Summarize Book. Right. We'll do create. We'll hit next here, and this is uh, you know very similar to a lot of the other integrations and custom actions that we've set up before. Uh, Open AI. OpenAI provides a very robust uh, and easy to follow um, API uh, for us to use. So I've already I'm already signed in here, but if you don't have one, go to platform.openai.com and create an account there. They provide you with some free credits to get started with, um, and uh, you can also use uh, you know set up a billing account and do kind of like a pay as you go, which is uh, what I'm actually doing here. So. Uh, but I'm going to click on this documentation uh, tab here, and then we're actually going to scroll down to this uh, API reference where it says completions. And if I click on this, you can see that uh, it requires several different things. Uh, this is very similar to a lot of other requests that we might use. Um, we can see here that we need, uh, this is the base URL here. So let me just go ahead and copy this, and we will stick this here in the base URL. Uh, the method is a post, and again, we got that from right here uh, in, in the API documentation. Uh, and then we can see that we need uh, two headers. The first one is called content type. So we're going to go back to our custom action, go to header. We will paste in the name content type. And then the value here is just going to be this application slash JSON. So we'll go ahead and paste that right here in the value. Click done. And then the second header that we need is actually this authorization. And this is pretty common uh, for telling APIs uh, that you have permission to use them. So the name of this one is authorization. And then before we hit done here, we need to actually create an API key. Um, and to do this, we can just go up to our account here. We'll go to view API keys. And you can see I've already got one that's kind of old. And because I can't actually see this one again, I'm just going to create a new one. Uh, and we will copy this. And again, you'll want to save this somewhere else because they can only show you this once, right? You can't access this again. So I'm just going to copy this. And then in the value here on this custom action, we're going to type in bearer, and then we're going to paste in our key. And then we'll just hit a, uh, we'll just put in a space right there, all right? So we'll click done. And then the, the final part of this is to kind of put in some, some parameters that we want to send to the API, 
So let me go back to documentation here. We'll go back to our completions endpoint. And you can see that there are various models that we can use. Uh, they have a, a, you know, a list of models and, and, and things that you can use. Uh, different models are more accurate, um, are, you know, more human-like, uh, some are more dry and just factual. Uh, so, but you can choose the one that you want to use. I think this text Da Vinci is just fine. I mean, it works. Uh, it's also like one of the cheaper ones that you can use as well. Um, we'll need the prompt that we're going to send the max tokens that we can spend on this response, right? Uh, I don't want it to give me an essay because that would be very expensive. It would use lots of words to do that. Uh, and tokens represent uh, either words or portions of words, right? Um, so it's kind of a, it's not even per word basis, but um, for all intents and purposes, that's kind of what's happening here, right? Uh, so I can tell it the maximum kind of length, if you will, that I want it to generate. And then the temperature here, uh, the higher you go with this, the more kind of charismatic the AI will be, right? So if you go, uh, we can see that in this, uh, in this description here, temperature, uh, it defaults to one, but if you put something, you know, between zero and two, uh, obviously 0.2 will make it more focused and deterministic and 0.8 will make it more random and kind of charismatic, right? So the higher you go, the more random it'll be. Um, so I'm just going to copy this whole thing here not including these quotation marks. And we'll just copy that. And we're actually just going to paste this right here in the body. Okay. Uh, the model, I'm going to leave the same. The max tokens, um, I'm going to set this to something like 100 uh, because I think that that's a good kind of length for a summary of a book. The temperature, maybe I would set this to 0.2 um, because I do want it to be you know somewhat random and different each time. Um, and then the prompt here, we actually need that to make this dynamic, right? So I'm going to go up here to add item. We'll add a text item here and we will call this book title. Okay. And the example value here, maybe we want to say tale of two cities. Okay. And let's go back down here to our JSON body. We will erase out this kind of test uh, prompt here. And we will put in quotes. We will use this input that we just made. We'll put in a, a, another quote kind of right before this one, before this little comma here. And I don't want to just send the book title, right? I want to tell it to do something. So I'm going to say uh, summarize the book and then a comma there, all right? So I'm telling it to summarize the book, and then there's the book title, okay? So it's going to do the same thing every time. And this kind of helps, uh, you know, narrow down uh, the response to make it a little bit more predictable, right? Um, and if I wanted to, I could say, you know, in one sentence, summarize the book, and then book title um, to, to make sure that whatever my users are typing in, that it's not, you know, abusing uh, this, this action, all right? So if I've got everything set up correctly, uh, we can actually go over here to this run test request and run a test request. It'll do some thinking right here on the back end for us, and it'll send us a test successful message and some uh, some, paramp some uh, response uh, keys here. And the main one that we need here is just this choices.txt. Um, and you can keep all of these other ones if you want to, but uh, I'm just going to kind of delete these. You don't really need any of these, really. Um, the model, you know, when it was created, this is a timestamp. Uh, the object, don't really need that. But I could keep the ID, right, if I wanted to be able to reference this uh, in the future. So these three things look good to keep. So I'll click Save Custom Action here. And now that this is actually, uh, we've got this action created, I'm, I'm going to actually use the input, this input here, as the input for this custom action. So we'll, we'll go to other components and then there's whatever the user types in the input. Okay. So, uh, after they do that, it will, uh, after we've actually gotten the text, we need to actually create the book in our own Adalo database. So let's go to create book and you'll notice that I've got the title. This also needs to be whatever the user has typed in to that input. And the summary is going to be whatever this step returns right, in that choices.txt that we saw. 
So we're going to choose that, um, that key from the custom action itself. Okay, so we're going to generate the summary and then save it as a part of that book. And then any books that are created will show up here in the list for us, right? And don't think that you can't just do this with books. You can do this with pretty much anything you want to do with ChatGPT. You don't have to just tell it to summarize things. You can tell it to write blog posts. You can tell it to summarize restaurant reviews. Uh, you know, there's tons and tons and tons of different things that you can do with this API. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. We'll try a, maybe a different book this time. Let's try uh, The Great Gatsby. We'll give it a few seconds to kind of think about this. And then once it gets it back, you can see that it's created us a book, uh, a book summary of The Great Gatsby. Um, let, let's try a, let's try 1984. Let's see what happens here. Cool. So we've got one for 1984 as well. So it's a dystopian novel by George Orwell. Nice. So you can see that um, it it's really pretty cool in that it can generate these, these uh, summaries for books and all sorts of different things. There's tons and tons of stuff that you can do with the OpenAI uh, API here, especially with this completions endpoints. It's really, really handy for, for doing stuff like this. Um, I will say, uh, be careful with this. You can very quickly run up a bill with OpenAI, <laughs> um, just you know, testing out stuff, and, and especially if you give it to end users, they can use up your token, uh, you know, your token quota quite easily, uh, generating different things. So. Uh, something to keep in mind, but definitely a super, super powerful integration that you can put right inside your Adalo apps.